Hello and welcome to Evening Reading and Prayer. It's Tuesday, September the 29th of 2020. We begin our evening together reading from Celtic parables, Martha being Mary. We need people who search for the truth and we need people to proclaim it. We need people who quietly contemplate God's love and we need people to express it. We need people who devote their lives to prayer and we need people to enact those prayers. We need people who are free from all worldly ties and we need people to manage our affairs. We need both Mary and Martha. At times every Martha must become Mary and every Mary must become Martha. Let us pray. Praise to you, God, for long, warm days, for buzzing bees and chirping crickets, for shade trees and gentle breezes. Praise to you for the Earth's rotation, for our cycle around the sun, for sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Praise to you for the order of the universe, the, the variety of the seasons, and the gift of another summer. As we bring this day to an end, we also note the end of the season and give you thanks. Be with us as we worship this night, as you have been throughout the day. Amen. Our first scripture lesson is from John chapter 15, verses 1 through 8. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit, while every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you are like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you bear much fruit showing yourselves to be my disciples. And from Galatians chapter five, verses 22 through 26. By contrast, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, competing against one another, envying one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the last couple of weeks, I keep coming across one particular hymn, and I keep hearing from people about how much they love this hymn. It's one of my favorites, and I'd like to share it with you this evening. It's written by Natalie Sleeth, In the Bulb There is a Flower. In the bulb there is a flower, in the seed an apple tree, in cocoons a hidden promise, butterflies will soon be free. In the cold and snow of winter, there is a spring that waits to be, unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. There's a song in every silence, seeking word and melody. There's a dawn in every darkness, bringing hope to you and me. From the past will come the future. What it holds, a mystery. Unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. In our end is our beginning, in our time, infinity. In our doubt, there is believing, in our life, eternity. In our death, a resurrection, at the last, a victory. 
unrevealed until its season, something God alone can see. The alternate title for that hymn is Hymn of Promise, and I think we can see why it might be called such. In my daily reading from the Henry Nowen Society, this also came with regard to eternal life. It's called The Indwelling of God, Here and Now, written by Henry Nowen. Eternal life. Where is it? When is it? For a long time I have thought about eternal life as a life after all my birthdays have run out. For most of my years I have spoken about the eternal life as the afterlife as life after death. But the older I become, the less interest my afterlife holds for me. Worrying not only about tomorrow, next year, and the next decade, but even about the next life, seems a false preoccupation. Wondering how things will be for me after I die seems, for the most part, a distraction. When my clear goal is the eternal life, the life that must be reachable right now, where I am, because eternal life is life in and with God, and God is where I am here and now. The great mystery of the spiritual life, the life in God, is that we don't have to wait for it as something that will happen later. Jesus says, dwell in me as I dwell in you. It is this divine indwelling that is eternal life. It is the active presence of God at the center of my living the movement of God's spirit within us that gives us the eternal life. Our prayer this evening comes from the Church of Scotland Book of Common Order. Let us pray. Lord of all being and source of every blessing, we thank you for all good things for life and love, for health and food, for work and home, for nature's beauty and comfort, for human skills and laughter, for memory and hope, and for everything in this past week which has given us pleasure, nourishment, and strength. Loving God, remember this night the whole human family, especially those who hunger for food or justice, those who lack homes or human dignity. So many are unknown to us, yet each known to you, and each a child of your love. Remember your people in every part of the world, redeemed by Christ, dedicated to service, called to love. Remember your church in this place, set in this community to light the way to your grace and truth. Remember those who are ill or sorrowing, those who are concerned for dear ones, those who have difficult choices to make, especially any known to us whom we commend to you now in the silence. Lord, we think of our community and province and nation as we wonder what will happen next with the pandemic. Numbers are rising and so is anxiety. Bring us your peace and protect your people. Give wisdom to those who must make decisions for the rest of us. Those in political power and those who work in public health who are fielding all that is going on in this strange time. Give them peace and strength to continue to serve well as they have been doing throughout the pandemic. Be with those who are caring for any who are sick and be with those who are sick. Lord, may they know that nothing is able to separate them from your love in Christ Jesus. Lord, by your mercy, bring us at the last with all your faithful people 
to the peace and joy of your nearer presence through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, our Creator, by your mercy and might, the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light. We give into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes, knowing that only those things which you bless will prosper. To your love and protection we commit one another and all for whom we have prayed, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As God has been with you throughout this day, may God continue to be with you and protect you throughout this night. Blessings and good night.